do it. You scrawled on this video to do it. It's your boy, Daddy Scobar Dreamer. Alright, so we back with another big buddy banger. You feel me? Listen. Nah, I'm saying y'all see the title. We on some Tarzan stuff today. If y'all don't know what Tarzan is, y'all obviously too young to be watching this freaking video. Go to Netflix right now and watch some Tarzan. But basically, right, these people were raised by animals. Now, I personally think I was raised by animals too, hence why every animal I interact with just respects me as a as a human being. I don't know if you guys saw, I went to the zoo with Destiny a couple months ago. Um, and it was like we went to the wolf enclosure and the wolves was all the way in the back. It's probably like a mile back, you know what I'm saying? I said a little hur, 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 and they all came running to the thing, jumping up on me and all that type of stuff. It was crazy. They realized I'm an alpha male and everything like that. Um, also, you know, I go to the zoo, I see lions and the lions come walk up to me, put their paw on the thing. We, we do the little paw thing like if you got somebody's in jail and y'all at the phone booth thingy in between the little glass window, you put your hand up. That's what the, the lion has been doing to me and stuff like that. I just feel like I was raised by animals. It's like animals just respect me so much. I, it's like I speak to animals, you know what I'm saying? But apparently there's other people like me in the world, which I didn't know. That person did not know. I thought I was the only animal whisperer, you know what I'm saying? So today we're going to be watching this. I'm actually very excited for this. I, I, I like animals a lot. Um, I never really knew I liked it. I like exotic animals. Forget like the regular animals like the, the regular dogs and all that stuff. I like exotic animals like lions and, and freaking uh, monkeys and tigers and ligers and all them stuff. <sighs> Why'd I say any of that? I don't know. But what I do know is you need to go to joy.com to send by two with third free component to save yourself $50. We got some new designs coming soon, so y'all stay tuned for that. Very excited for the new designs that's coming out because I'm getting some designs for finally for you new waivers that can't wear the costume where to drown it because you don't got waves, but you still want people to respect you as a waiver now. So I got something for y'all. Just stay tuned. I'm going to keep it on the low. But if you got anything you want me to react to in specific, hit me over there on Instagram at Juber underscore and I will react to it. I mean, if it is something interesting, I'll react to it and I shout you out if I react to it. So without further ado, let's just get right into this. Wild animals raising human beings sounds unbelievable. No, it doesn't. Even scientists sometimes doubt the possibility. It's but it happens. It does. Just like the story of Tarzan. Who was I was just telling you about Tarzan, didn't I? I was literally just telling you about Tarzan. He was raised by, by gorillas. You know what I'm saying? I, I can speak to gorillas too. I just never seen one. You know what I'm saying? It's raised by monkeys. And in this episode, we will be checking out 10 people who are raised by wild animals and grew up to become proper adults. Be ready for some bizarre yet amazing stories that will blow your mind away. Before we get started, make sure you hit that like button. See, I want one of them. I want a lion, man. Me and Dusty went to Mexico and I held a lion and I held a tiger. It was the best experience of my freaking life. I just felt so at home, you know? Like, I felt like I'd never been home until I was holding that lion. Also, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can keep up to date with all our latest and most exciting content. Come on, man, show me the people. We came across an ostrich at home. Sidi Mohammed ran away from home in 1945 and came across an ostrich's nest. He witnessed the hatching of the eggs and he stayed with them. He became friends with the parent ostriches. And nice. from them, he learned skills like running fast. They also showed him to sleep in their nests and sometimes covered him with their wings to protect him. All the time that he spent with the ostrich. Pause real quick. They just said some foo foo. They just said some stupidness. They said the ostrich taught him how to run fast. I doubt the ostrich did that because if he did, he would have been in, in the Olympics. And that little boy does not look like Usain Bolt to me. That's all I'm saying. He ate only grass. And when he was 12 years old, some ostrich hunters found him and took him back home. Going back home did not feel normal to Muhammad, as he still wanted to be with his ostrich friends. How long was he with the he ostriches? He integrated back into human society That's him? and grew up into a normal adult, capable of leading a normal life. Wait, he is that him or they just took like some random black people and said that's him? I think they just took some random black people. That's why he says I feel offended. Or got married and had children. Number nine. Gazelle boy. Gazelle boy. In 1945, a 10-year-old boy was found in the Syrian desert in the midst of some gazelles. It was difficult to catch him because he could run really fast. They had to chase oh, him in an Iraqi army jeep. It was estimated that he lived in the wild for about nine years. Oh, dang. And despite his bony frame, he was extremely strong and fit. He had mastered the lifestyle of the gazelles, and rumors had it that he was abandoned as a baby. 
When they captured him, they bound both his hands and feet because he had extremely strong muscles. What? Now this man is Superman, right? He was locked up until 1955, and he tried to escape from where they kept him. Perhaps they did little to help him return to the human state, but they stopped him from escaping using extreme measures. Wait, okay, but why did they arrest him though? What did he do? Be like a gazelle, that's illegal? I don't, I never saw that law before. Why did they arrest him? They got him locked up for all this time, for what? For running fast? We will not go into details so as not to offend you. What? Number eight, Marina Chapman, raised by capuchin monkeys. Imagine getting kidnapped and abandoned in the jungle where no one can find you. That is the story of Marina Chapman. Nobody knows why she was kidnapped, but her abductors left her in the Colombian jungle where no one found her but a group of capuchin monkeys. These monkeys adopted her, as is their usual fashion to take in human children. After the monkeys adopted Wait, what do you Marina, mean by usual she fashion? She how to hunt rabbits and birds with her bare hands and how to survive on her own. She lived with the rabbits for five years, after which some hunters found her and took her out of the jungle. Wait, wait, this is just not making sense to me. So she learned from the monkeys how to hunt rabbits and all the other stupid stuff. And then she lived with the rabbits for four years. What did she eat when she was living with the rabbits? Did she just like pretend to be their friend and every once in a while? <laughs> you feel me? Like, oh, my rabbit friend family, I love you guys. <laughs> you feel me? Like every once in a while? Like, I don't get it. I'm confused. They not making sense here. One would think her troubles were finally about to be over. But the hunters sold her to a brothel. What? At the time, Marina could not communicate like a human being as she did not learn any language. She later escaped from the brothel and lived on the streets for a while until she found a mafia family that took her in as a slave. Wait, what the f- Over the years, what's, what's she going made on? some connections and was able to get away to Bradford, where she got a job as a nanny. She got married- Oh, I ain't letting that crazy lady mess with my kids. The bunny lady? You gonna let the bunny, the bunny monkey lady mess with your kids, be the nanny to your kids? I, I wish the F you would. And have kids. The thing about her story is that many people did not believe it. She even wrote a book that many publishers rejected because they thought she made the stories up. She but did. when some scientific tests were carried out on her legs, they revealed Harris lines, which indicated that she experienced malnutrition as a young child. A Colombian professor, Carlos Conde, also carried out some tests on Marina using her reaction when she saw photos of capuchin monkeys and that of her adopted family. Wait, Number what? seven, the Wolf Girls. This story is one of the most common and controversial. Wait, wait, wait. And I have see a lot. They're not making sense right now. A lot of stuff not making sense to me right now. Let me pause this real quick. That bunny girl, right? The bunny girl that used to be the ape girl. And when she sees monkeys now, she's all like scared or something. They said that somebody did a test on her by showing her a picture of the Chapaca butt monkeys, whatever the heck they called. And based on her reaction, they saw it was true. So she looked at the monkey and was like, family. Like, come on, man. Y'all gotta be, y'all gotta, look, I don't know. These people is faking it. I'm real. I'm, I'm, I was really raised by these animals. Now, I was really, I got the real connection. These people, I think they faking it. I don't know. I don't know. Special stories of people who are raised by wild animals. What is this, it Twilight? is a story of two girls, Kamala and Amala, aged eight months and one and a half years, respectively, when they were found. The two girls were not sisters, as it was believed that they came into the company of the wolves at different times. The people who lived close believed that the two girls were goats, and none of them attempted to do anything about Wait. it. Close believed that the two girls were goats. Goats or ghosts? For times. The people who lived close believed that the two girls were goats, and none of them attempted goats? to do anything about it because they were scared. The missionary who ran an orphanage in North India, Reverend Joseph Singh, heard the story and went to investigate. Truly, they saw the girls, and there was nothing human about them, as everything they did was just like the wolves they lived with. Reverend Singh rescued the girls, but it was a challenge making them behave like humans. They could not stand upright because their joints and tendons had become so short. They ate only raw meat, and they tore any clothes that were put on them. They never smiled, and they were incapable of any human interaction. They you think I'm gonna save them demonic girls? They said the pastor went and saved them. If I see them doing all that foo foo, ripping their clothes, not smiling, first of all, if I got you for a long time, I saved you from these wolves and you ain't cracking smile, but get out of my face. 
I don't want to see you, little girl. Go back to the wolves, man. I hope they eat you. They had wolf senses, and they always looked scared. Singh tried to reintegrate them, but he had little progress. Amala, the younger of the two, got sick and died, which threw Kamala into a long period of mourning. After a while, Kamala started recovering and showed signs that she may be a human being yet again. Number six. Wait, the, the, why the girl died though? She was doing just fine with the wolves until the humans came and killed her. That's what it, the humans came and killed her because she was. See, that's why I'd be scared to talk about my special talents about like speaking to animals and being an alpha male and all these animals just respecting me because that's the government and stuff go try and get me. I know that. That's why I'd be wary about it. But you know what? I'm tired of hiding. You know, I'm tired of hiding. I'm not scared no more. Everybody. I'm not, t I'm not scared, you feel me? I'm not, I'm, I'm just tired of hiding my true self, you know what I'm saying? Toddler saved and kept alive by cats. In 2008, Argentinian police found a one-year-old child abandoned. When the police found the child, eight wild cats surrounded him. And each time the police tried to move closer, the cats became aggressive in a mm. protective manner. The protective. police later realized that the little boy had been abandoned for days. And the cats kept him warm by cuddling him and licking him to give him some warmth. The cats also brought back scraps of food for the little boy whenever they went hunting. If not for the cats, the toddler would not have survived the harsh winter. The boy came to be in the company of the cats because his homeless father was out collecting cardboards to sell. According to the father, the cats always protect- Homeless people sell cardboard? I always wondered where the heck they got their cardboard from. How much do they sell it for? And where do they get the markers? You know what I'm saying? But that's besides the point. The cats, I, I was kind of, I wasn't going to say nothing, but now I'm going to say something. They said the cats brought back food. Like the, the leftover food that they had. What, what do you mean by brought back leftover food? The leftover, like, dead rats or something? And the baby ate that. Okay. Back his son, and in his absence, they did the same thing. It is quite a pleasant surprise to see feral cats protecting a human child that way. Number five. Oh, now this, look at this boy. This particular story is a little bit sad and emotional. It's sad. This little boy's mother had him when she was 16 years old, and she abandoned him. He was picked up by the childcare system until he was about 10 years old. He made his way into the midst of some dogs, living in a cave near the Chilean port. The dogs were the family he knew, and one of the female dogs in the pack gave the boy some breast milk. The boy the was hunting- Ain't no mother- Ain't no way this little boy was sucking on some dog titties. Ain't no way this little boy was sucking on some dog titties. Ain't no way. For food with the dogs regularly, and they usually scavenged food from dumpsters around. The police later found the boy, and he tried to escape. In his bid to run away, he jumped inside the water, and the policeman brought him out. The boy was aggressive, and when he was checked, they found him to be depressed. He, at first, wait, wait, what? They checked, how do you check the boy and find him to be depressed? That's like, I thought you were going to say they checked the boy and found he had rabies, or found he had bronchitis, or found he had Ebola, so they said they found him to be depressed. He's a dog, bro. How you, how, he's... He was aggressive, and when he was checked, they found him to be depressed. He, at first, he did not communicate like a human being. All he did was bark until later, when they first... <laughs> Look at the way he run it, man. Look at the way he run it. He was aggressive. And when he was checked, they found him to be depressed. He, at first, he did not communicate like a human. <laughs> it looked like that boy twerking, man. Checked, they found him to be depressed. He, at first, he did not communicate like a human being. All he did was bark until later, when they found out that he understood little Spanish. He knew he was human. <laughs> wait, job, wait, but what? He had so used to living with the dog. Wait, so now the dog speaks Spanish? How he know Spanish? Huh? How the boy was abandoned by his his 16 year old mother, and wandered into a cave with dogs, and he sucked on some titty milk that gave him Spanish powers or something. He sucked on the dog milk, and the dog milk taught him how to speak Spanish. What the what? Okay, I can't. What the heck going on? That he refused to go anywhere else with anybody. We could not confirm that they were able to help him or take him to a proper home. Number four. Lady who spent 38 Please years give me something real. Jungle. Please. Amy Chady went missing when she was four years old in 1974. Okay. Fast forward to 2012. She was found after 38 years. The local community around where she was found had passed rumors around that there was a girl in the jungle all those years. She was found in Myanmar, naked and living in a cemetery 
although she went missing in India, close to Myanmar, and it was quite a surprise that nobody found her all those years. An even more remarkable thing about Ing is that she was behaving like a normal human, despite living in the jungle for almost four what? decades. She could hold simple conversations and was learning new words. She was not aggressive, nor was she reluctant to communicate with humans. At the time she was found, her family did not... And Why did I say coronavirus test? When? Was this approved by oh, management? An entire landing page? Not allow any psychological what a COVID or medical got evaluation. So not much detail about her health was available to the public. Number three. Mo, what the heck though? She, she, wait, okay, four years old, right? Do babies know how to talk at four? Alexa, when do kids learn to talk? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, as with other skills and milestones, the age at which kids learn language and start talking can vary. Many babies happily babble mama and dada well before their first birthday, and most toddlers can say about 20 words by the time they're 18 months old. Did that answer Alexa, your question? Alexa, stop. I guess that answered my question. So 18 months, that's, that's basically what it is. So if I, okay, boom. So four years old, she knew a little bit, a little bit of English, right? Because that's when she went missing, four years old. And she was gone for 38 years, so now she's 42 years old. She was found booty balls naked, but she acted like a normal human being. What was she eating? What was she doing this whole time? Where, where was she? Why did she? Why was she gone for 38 years? Because there's no way like she, she was walking around all this time and didn't find any civilization. She was obviously walking around. She saw people, but she didn't want to interact with them. What? I'm just confused. How big is that rainforest? That's what I want to freaking know. The alpha dog boy. That's Isaac me. Mishukov was born in 1992 to a single mother. His mother had an abusive and alcoholic boyfriend who made Ivan run away from home. He started living with some dogs when he was between four and six years old. Okay. He started by getting food for the dogs while the dogs gave him protection. Over time, after living with them for a while, Ivan became the alpha dog. That nice. is, the leader of the pack. The okay. police picked him up thrice but he found a way to escape. But because dogs are always looking for food, Ivan was captured finally after luring him with a lot of food placed outside a restaurant. Within a short time, he had learned how to speak normal human language. Unfortunately, the boy was unable to adapt to living with humans. He just did not see life the same way as every effort to make him see that he belonged to the human world was futile. He had gotten used to living with the dogs, and they provided him with a support system that he didn't think he would get anywhere else. Despite the extremely cold weather condition in Moscow, he did not mind leaving the comfort of a proper home to go and live with dogs. Wait, what? What was... How? Wait... Why did the cops keep arresting these people? Like, what are they doing? Because every single story has been, oh, the cops arrested them, the cops picked them, but why? Like, what? Is acting like an animal illegal? If that is the case, then you better arrest me. You know what I'm saying? Because I've been, man, I ain't finna do that to myself today. Number two, man who lived as both a wolf and a man. Marcos Rodriguez Pandoja was sold to a goat herder when he was seven. But the herder must have left him all by himself in the mountains. Marco soon adapted to the life of solitude because he was coming from a home where his stepmother beat him regularly. Dang. He spent 12 years living with wolves and other animals until he was rescued and taken back to the midst of humans. He was very well into his 70s now and he has not fully transitioned into the human way of life. According to him, the animals guided him on what to eat. He ate what they ate and this way, he established a strong relationship with the animals. Telling the story of how he started living with the wolves, he had entered a cave and was playing with cubs till he fell asleep. Their okay. mother returned to the cave with food and fed her cubs. Then she threw a piece of meat at him, which he was reluctant to eat. But she pushed the meat further to him, came closer, and started licking him. He also said he had a snake friend that allowed him around, and they ate together. He okay. Okay, this gotta be the most cat one I ever heard. So the wolf, right? First of all, if you in the area where it's a bunch of babies, especially wolf babies, the mama come back and see an intruder in her area, instant death. Instant kill. Now I'm saying, instant ugh, death. Now I'm saying, you telling me the wolf gave, ignored you, gave the puppies food, and then gave you food? Second of all, he said he had a snake friend. How the heck you make a friend with a snake? Well, I guess a lot of people got snakes as friends but that's besides i'm talking about a real snake you know what i'm saying but and it, he said this is the most cat part this is the biggest cat part 
He said he shared meals with the snake. I don't know if y'all ever seen a snake eat, but the snake eats the whole thing. The snake doesn't bite off a piece. It literally deep throats that whole mother sucker. Now I'm saying no weird stuff, no nothing, but it deep throats the whole, listen, it deep throats the whole uh, rat, mouse, whatever the heck it's eating. It's no sharing. There's no biting it off and giving you a piece. There's none of that. Now I'm saying, so how the heck are you a friend with a snake? And sharing food with this boy kept so hard. Even in his old age, he can still make sounds like the fox, the wolf, the deer, and a lot of other animals. What sound he do deers make? He was even scared when he returned to the normal society because there were no animals making the sounds he was familiar with. Although right now, he lives normally with his neighbors and he fell in love with playing the harmonica. Number one. The monkey boy from Uganda. John Sabunia was found in 1991 after he had spent three years in the wild living with monkeys. Okay. He saw his father kill his mother, and he found a new family in the jungle afterward. He lived with African green monkeys, and they took care of him for three years until a tribeswoman found him in a tree. The woman went to the village and brought back some men to help capture the boy. But John would have none of it, nor would the monkey. He resisted them, and the monkey threw sticks and all sorts of things at the villagers. He was covered in wounds and scars, and according to the reports, when he excreted, worms came out. He was unable to talk or cry at the beginning, but over time, he learned how to speak. A couple that ran a charity, Paul and Molly Waswa, was responsible for taking care of him, and they did a good job. He grew up to join the Pearl of Africa Children's Choir, and BBC ran a documentary on him in 1999. And that's 10 people who were raised by wild animals. I'm still stuck in the fact that they said he, he witnessed his, his dad kill his mom. That was pretty deep. I don't know. But anyways, that's the end of the video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to like right now. I, I don't know if I believe all of these, right? There's a couple ones that seem a little fishy. Some of them could be true. I know my story personally, my personal story is true. I'm gonna make a video about it and everything like that one of these days. Like BBC is probably gonna wanna do a documentary me on a documentary on a docu hello words. Uh, see, I still be having trouble with the English language because you know I grew up with like the animals and stuff like that. <coughs> Dang. But um BBC or whatever they have BBC, wait a minute. But you that network is probably gonna wanna do a documentary on like my story and stuff like that. So maybe if they do that, do that, I'll keep y'all like up to date with that and everything like that but y'all let me know in the comments down below is there anybody else out there this is the calling for all y'all out there that might be like me that's that's just an alpha animal man now i'm saying you every animal respects you they bow down to you they understand you you can speak to them they speak back if anybody out there like me let me know in the comments down below do y'all think this stuff is real too well, obviously we know my story is real, but do you think the people in this videos was real? Let me know in the comments down below too. And um, yeah, that's for everybody here. Before you dip out, have yourself a you, right? You know you want one so you can be sexy, beautiful, have your ledges aged, your ledges aged, your edges laid. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, sometimes I really do be having trouble like talking. I think it's because of my like, my, my past with like the animals and stuff like that. Like I missed a whole big part of like my, my childhood because I was with like, the lions and gorillas and tigers and snakes on them, different type of stuff. But that's, that's the point. That's really the end of the video. I'm gonna see y'all out. Hey yo, C3, so fly, hop out the butterfly. Wings to the sky, no, I'm never borderline. They choose I, cause I'm way above you. The waves make the haters love you when the ladies come through.